to look into that sometime, but not right now. Welcome back. We're going to learn 1d4 today. By hook or by crook, we'll get there. Um, so, yeah, I guess my general approach is just going to be, let's start off with some blitz. And um, once we've garnered an audience, then look forward to maybe running a tournament or doing challenges or who knows what. Um, actually, I don't think I leave my preferences open for challenges. Let me check that. Uh, do I allow for challenges? This would be under my privacy settings. Eh, sure, why Why not? Jobaba Jr. That's quite the name there. Um, let's see, can I Benko it up? So I think this is the Benko? Or maybe it's the Blumenfeld. I always get the two confused. Uh, maybe this is the Blumenfeld. This might be a Blumenfeld declined. Which means we're really out of um, my knowledge base. Um, so... <laughs> Okay, we're going to learn D4. This is a way to learn. Um, can I just take this? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to gambit the pawn, and I think I still can. I'm concerned, though, about this D pawn that's in my face here. Um, yeah, I'm very confused. Okay, let me take this and then attempt to deal with the consequences of things being where they are. Uh, I think a problem is going to be if white plays d6. Uh, my pieces are very awkwardly placed. On the other hand, I might just be winning the pawn. So, yeah, I'm not sure that this combination of whatever is going on makes sense for white. Since I do control all these center squares, d4, e4, d5, you'd think, at least I would think, um, that I've got something here. Alright, so we got bishop c4. Azvish. Yeah, we're just learning 1d4. Um, admittedly, I got the black pieces this game, so I don't get to show off all of my knowledge that I've not yet acquired. But I'm sure the time will, for that display will uh, be approaching. Um, but yeah, I th I'm not sure if I got into a Benko or a Blumenfeld here. Um, Either way, this wasn't what I signed up for with this opening. But it seems to be playable, whatever I got. Um, so let's just activate the pieces. Yeah, Mario RPG is pretty awesome. I'm not a fan of what Square's done lately, but they did excellent work with the game. Um, back in its heyday. <laughs> Am I seriously going to do this? Bishop d8. <laughs> uh, this is the point of bishop d8 is so I can play queen. Uh, oh. He's threatening unfun things. He's trying to ruin my fun. Okay, let, let's just pretend we didn't notice that. And so if he does, bishop takes f6, threatening the same thing I'm threatening. Um, I should have played that faster, though. One, because I'm low on time. And two, because um, I could have bluffed him into thinking I was paying no attention. <sighs> I'll learn. 
So now he plays bishop takes f6 and bishop takes g5 and okay he's got his pawn back and we play a chess game now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's ace rookian, but without any of the sophistication. Here we go, knight d4. Designed mostly to baffle, but also designed because it has a legitimate threat of chopping the queen, which breaks the mating attack with rook h3. But now if he takes on f3, uh, queen d4, again, very ace rookie, and a, a little bit more mature of a threat. This, this is not bad for a warm-up game. Oh, wow. Alright, so... Um, I'm still going to play queen d4. Who needs the pawn? So my question now is do I go chop the rook? Which kind of traps my queen. Oh, I throw in bishop d1 first. And then I chop the rook. There we go. And if possible, I get a mate in here too, but um, I don't think that's happening. Mostly because this is flashy, but also because it's a good developing move. Oops. Um, it's not such a good developing move. Okay, we're going to need some ace rook hooks to pull this off. Um, we're going to need a lot of ace rook hooks to pull this off. So first get the bishop to move so we can snap the pawn and activate our piece. We're down a knight. Our king's exposed. We're down a knight and a pawn, but now just down a knight. Um, so yeah, if I just keep my pieces active, maybe something good will happen. I shouldn't have been so flashy. Um, that's not good. All right, you're going to take this. I presume knight takes. Yeah. If bishop takes, I get a pawn. I get a pawn. I don't get a pawn. Just kidding. I'll have to... Yeah, okay, I can resign this. There's no coming back from that. Oh, well. Joe Bava Jr., pretty solid. Um, yeah, that could have gone better. Hey, look, I got Joe Bava Jr. again. I'm going to show him that I know how to play d4 with the white pieces, too. I don't think he believes me. So, I, I hear that pawn c4 is a thing you're supposed to do. Um, no, I do know a little bit more than this. Um... So I think knight c3 is book, and e3, I think, e4 is also playable. Um, I'm not sure the best way to counter knight f6. Knight f3 might also be fine. Alright, and so... If I remember correctly, which I probably do not, b5 here doesn't quite work so well. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we're going into... Oh. We're going there, guys. We're going into isolated queen pawn territory. Um... It's an interesting decision. So now I... Th Wait, what? What's going on here? Why would you put your knight there? Why would you continue to neglect castling? 
Is this just clearly bad for white or something? I mean, it's not that great, but it shouldn't be bad. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Not exactly what I'm looking for. If I play e4 here, b4, e5, pawn takes, pawn takes. Eh, let's find out what happens. Ready, fire, aim. Um, so I think I can play knight takes. I think I have to play knight takes. And now, oh, f4 is no good. Um, here we go. It's a queen pawn opening. Taking on e6 is always fine. Um, we've got this in the bag. We've got so got this in the bag. Just push all the pieces forward. Nothing to worry about here. Um, do I have a favorite project Euler problem? I don't think so. I mean, there were some fun ones, but none are coming to mind at the moment. Wait a sec. So, I just take this, right? That's check. And then I develop my piece. And yeah, threatening knight c7, and like my whole gambit works out. Told you. Told you I knew what I was doing. Um, wait, the same trap? Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Like the mate on the king side thing. Yeah. Forty percent of the time, it works every time. So, I don't think Joe Bava Jr. is impressed by this. He's probably like, "What the heck, dude? You just like sacked all your pieces." Okay, is he gonna rage rematch? I don't see him hitting the rematch button. Not seeing... Okay, we're going to go to the analysis board and attempt to make some sense of the gobbledygook that is my opening theory. I maintain that bishop takes c4 can't have been too bad. Alright, so the end of the game I played knight d5, blunder, and my opponent countered with queen e5, blunder, and I countered with mistake, bishop takes d7, but I'm like, this is totally winning. Um, but yeah, I did also see bishop takes f4, which is the better way to do this. And my opponent countered with knight takes d7, blunder, and I just win. Um, but before that, bishop f4 is a blunder, king h1 forced, bishop takes e6 is an inaccuracy, because I should have just... Oh, I need open lines in the center. We're going to work our way back to the opening and figure out, like, okay, so this knight sack was just ridiculous. Um, and g3 was actually fine. I panicked for no reason. Um, but if g3 is fine, that means I probably managed my way through the opening waters at least as well as my opponent. Which is fortunate. Um... Let me check. I need to check my browser version, since this browser seems to be hanging. Uh, do I not have the latest version of this browser? This being Waterfox, the Windows open source Firefox, but tuned for, um, uh, for a 64-bit architecture. So it's like supposed to be more performant than Firefox. The latest version is 54.0.0.1. And I currently have installed something that's 
not as good, apparently. Help about... Oh no, I'm up to date. No, my browser's just slow as heck for some reason. I don't know. I should just use Chrome then. Yeah, I'm not even ask. Well, yeah, you're right. I don't need to ask Stockfish about the sack. It was just completely unsound. Um, it's still fun to play. Like, Stockfish does no appreciation for how fun sacrifices can be. None whatsoever. Alright, so... We're gonna do a Sicilian, because we can. Um, Uh-oh. I'm out of book. Um, You're not supposed to play Knight C3. Here we go. B5. Rather than risk falling into my opponent's deep preparation, I'm going to offer a gambit. Because that's how we roll. But also, this kind of sort of looks like a Benko. So... I mean, there's that. Benko would probably roll... Oh. Never mind, he's still around. He's still pretty cool. Um, but you know, hypothetically, were he in a grave, he would be rolling a round. I could be entirely mistaken too. Which would be quite sad. Um, Alright, so I got the d4 square. Yeah, this is the Benko, Frankenstein, Vienna, Dracula, Dutch, I don't know, something. Double Dutch, uh, Swiss Gambit. Um, so if I take the bishop, he takes my bishop. I take the knight, he takes my rook. That doesn't quite work. Um... Here we go. That advanced A pawn confers no advantage. I'm just going to plug the diagonal so that my bishop can't move anywhere. But also because I get this interesting pawn structure. Or I just play c5. I'm going to get that A pawn. Oh wow. Well, he's aiming for a quick f5. Can he get away with it? Oh, oh, wait. If I play knight g4, he just takes d4, but I take the knight with check. Um, hooray for, like, two-move tactics. So he's entombed his bishop. He's got to play f5, but now I have the e5 square. Um... But also, like, if I do knight e3, bishop takes pawn takes, I'm hitting b2. Um, I might not even want to play knight e3, because e5 is such a nice square also. And I could just play queen d6. Oh, but then he plays bishop f4. It'd be a shame for both of us to be playing for one move threats. So ah, I'm just gonna play for this. So I'm gonna hit this, hit b2, hit a6, defend across the sixth rank. Um now I have to make a decision about where to place the knight. Um I kind of do want this bishop. I kind of really do want the bishop. So now b2 is doubly attacked. Also, I'm hoping that some trick or something will arise with this pawn on e3. Um, oh. Okay. Well, I uh, have restored material equality. And I have a passed... Well, I will have a passed a pawn. Um... If I so want it. OK. 
Okay, let's just put the rook out. Of, oh, this kind of weakens f7. It does get my pawn off of a dark square. Um, alright, so... Yeah. There are imbalances in this position that are very imbalancy. Um, I can defend my f-pawn. And maybe if I'm lucky, my king can make it somewhere useful. Um, right, so my point here is that my B rook still can be mobile. Um, oops, I am in time pressure. So I will seek liquidation. Um... Yeah, I need to play slower time controls, or I need to play faster moves. Because um, my current arrangement's not working so well. Knight takes... Oops. Well, that could have been worse. That could have been much worse. Um... Guess I'm gonna take this. Now, if he takes my pawn, um, bad things happen to him. I'm gonna attempt to keep my king and their queen on opposite color squares. They're up two pawns um, for my bishop, so I'm not afraid to... Yeah, taking a draw there is probably the most practical result when you're down a minute and 30-some seconds. 3-2 um, is what I play the most, so I'm not sure why I'm so slow today, other than my selection of opening being vastly, vastly different than what I normally do. Um... So let's hit the master's database. Uh, for some reason that seems to not be my default preference even though I choose it every single time. Um, let's see a d3. Oh, knight of six is not in there. Oh right, b5. b5 not in the master database. Okay. Um, yeah, this is actually pretty ridiculous. Um, here, let's filter this to like 2,000 plus all-time controls. B5 has been played before on Leech Us. Well, all right, so bishop takes b5 as the continuation, and bishop b7 has no draws, at least in this sample of games. Um, knight f6, white always wins. E6, okay. Not sure if the move choice actually affects the outcome there. Um, yeah, so castle, g7, um, g5, castle, queen d2. Oh, okay, yeah, I suddenly don't like this at all for black. Um, Alright, so 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure this B5 Gambit thing was ridiculous. Um, I need to learn something against Knight C3 if I play the Sicilian. But I rarely essay the Sicilian, and I really rarely see Knight C3 against the Sicilian, so I might not need to prepare something there. I should probably like not show off by playing openings that I, I like am completely out of book, completely lost. And the Knight C3 Sicilian would be one of those things I have like no or very little reference uh, material in. All right, so this is like a Slav with E5, except um, without black, like, I don't know. Use your imagination. Um, wait, so I just take this. I've got a pawn on their side of the board. I could just play d5. I could play e3. e3 seems sensible, but... Hmm. Something just seems wrong about this. Like, what the heck? I'm going to take this and see just how badly it ends. Right, so go ahead, protect your pawn. Um... Am I not winning the C-pawn? I mean, yeah, I do lose my castling right. We're in an early endgame already. Um, at least in terms of my king is moving to C3. But I think I'm safe there. Um, so I'm confused. Okay, so yeah, the point is that he hits... Hey, do I not just play knight f3, though? I'm debating between f4 versus knight f3 here. Um, f4 seems solid. So he has nothing he can hit e4 with right out of the gate. Um, other than that knight, which I did not notice could move there and complicates everything. But if you ignore that little detail, uh, I'm doing great. Alright, so... Um, also, if you ignore me just hanging a rook, uh, this is just going fantastic. Um, so, yeah. I just have to complete my development, and my rook sack will make sense in due time. Man. Um, possibly my opening theory could use some work. Alright, so if I do... Oh wait, he can't open up his rook on the A file right now. So bishop takes bishop is fine. I was thinking a pawn takes, because I assumed he would just play a6 and try to get his knight out of the corner. Um, but yeah, now we got a knight and a pawn for rook, so this isn't completely terrible. Um, so, I guess the next step is to activate the king and pretend this is an endgame. And if we pretend hard enough, maybe good things will happen. All right. Let's go, King Go. Yeah, they had this all planned out, just like that knight takes e6 sack the other game. Um, or just like the whole board exploded completely in my favor, just very suddenly. 
Um, it was all planned out. See here, I got like knight c6 forking the king and the rook. It was all just a ruse, just a plan. Oh, okay. But I guess before I take the rook, we're going to check him first. Uh oh, I should not have done that. I should not have done that. Oh, but he believed my bluff, so never mind. A brilliant plan. Alright, so now we just take the free pawn. And when he checks us, we block with the knight. He is going to check us, right? All right, now he's not going to bother. So now we just run the A pawn up the board. Or I'm sorry, the B pawn. I'm thinking about capturing an A pawn. And apparently he doesn't care about the queen side. So um Okay. Is he going to fight? Also, if he plays king takes e4, I've got rook e1 check, and he's got to do some awkward king moves. Um, so he doesn't fork himself. Alright, so... Let's capture here. And push the pawn. How many seconds is a queen worth? Does anybody know? Um... I think that's a relevant question here. Free knight. Oh, we're playing this out. That's cute. Um, he does recognize that there's an increment, right? Boop a doop. Boop a doop. I probably should have gone to d7 directly, but hey, look. Uh, so how many seconds is a rook and a knight minus a pawn worth? Um, I guess, yeah, it does depend on how much time you have remaining. That is very true. Yep. Oh, hey, look, he, he, okay, that was gracious. He actually did resign. Um, all right, so looking back over the game, I'm curious what happened there. Oh, hey, look, we got a challenge. I guess, yeah, cosine. 3-2 standard. All right, hello and good luck. Um... The opponent is actually decent, so we'll play my tournament repertoire. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, we'll do this. This is cool. It's good for me to prep this, too. Because um, this is the stuff that I've been playing in tournaments. Um, so I might actually have some chance against Cosine here. Um... All right, so was it, what was the move order? I think this is fine. There's all kinds of ways you can play this. Um, most of them you just play h6 and... Um, some of these you can afford to, oh. I forgot to play, well I didn't play bishop e7, so I have to go back to drop back before going to g6 here. 
Um, it's not, I'm trying to figure out, is this one of the lines where I could tuck my king in on b7? It's always a challenge. It's good when you can do it, but it costs an extra tempo. Um, but on the other hand, my opponent's burned a tempo on b3, so I've got this tempo for b6. Oh. Uh oh. Um, this is not good. This is not a favorable form of this opening. This might be equal. If I'm lucky. I probably won't be. Ay, ay, ay. So, yeah, I think I've hurt myself here. Um. I have to, well this blockades my f8 bishop, but I think for tactical reasons I have to go for this. Regardless, I failed to stop f4, so these kingside pawns are rolling, meaning I have to get rolling on the queen side as soon as possible. Um, but, you know, white has a huge initiative. Like, this is just atrocious for black. Um, so yeah, I just a little bit out of form, just a little bit. Okay, so, I mean, I'm just basically waiting for him to cook me here, because I don't have places to put my pieces, I have to react vigorously whenever I see him acting here. He's playing a lot of good uh, preparatory moves, or um, uh, what's the word? Prophylaxis. So Jeez. Wow, what a mess. Um Well, I need the scope for my rook, so I have to do this. But this is going to suck. Yeah, this um this is not the best form of this opening that I've ever played. Um, it would be one of the mildest things I could say about this atrocity. I mean, I've got some play, but it's nothing like what I've prepped. So any chance of me hanging on here is just coincidental. I mean, yeah, I've played the Berlin a number of times. It leads to some fascinating endgames. Um, but this is not one of the better of those endgames. This one, white has all the trumps, and um, black is fighting to even stay on the board. Usually by the time these are rolling on the king side, you'd prefer to have something moving on the queen side and some threat of a passed pawn. Instead, all I have is my king is alive, which is a good thing maybe, but that's not what my goal should be. Wait, do I take this now? This gives me an initiative. Like, holy moly, this gives me an initiative. Why would you do this? What am I missing? I guess my e-pawn is loose. Um, maybe there's some other tactic or something here. Hmm. 
You had a perfectly good position, man. If king g3, bishop h4 mate. Um, so... Um... Hmm. I'm curious where this endgame leads. This is, like, super dangerous. I probably should not wander these paths. But I'm curious. So that curiosity is going to be the overriding factor here. I'm not, not putting all my eggs in my basket trying to win this. Well, I guess I am, but... Um, I guess I should say I'm not actually, like, focusing entirely on the result. I'm much more curious about where this will lead than I am about trying to... or interested in trying to win this. So, if I exchange there... I have to exchange here. And now, oh, this is messy. I think I have to run back. So I'm up a pawn. We got a two-second increment, guys. We can win this, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, this is gonna be tricky. Okay. What? Are you sure? That that's kind of a committal exchange to be making so early in the endgame. Um Okay. Um I got lucky, I got lucky, okay. <laughs> yeah. GG. Alright, so... <sighs> D4. Uh, okay, so we got what could be a variety of openings. Um, I'm going to try to avoid the more dangerous among them. And see, is this something I can play? Um, so, is this what they call... Oh, what's it? I don't remember what it's called. But it has a name. Um, um, I think this is okay. Oh, wait. That's interesting. What's this about? What is this about? This seems to be about me losing a pawn. So is this to say that knight c3 is just, like, not something I can get away with there? I don't understand this. No, this just drops a pawn. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, I should take on d4 in these lines. Um, yeah, I have to. <laughs> I 
should take on d4 in these lines. Or presumably c4 is what he means, but... Or d5. Oh! Oh! Okay, that's what's going on. So, like, this is no good. Well, no, I, I think the fact that I'm playing somebody like 300 points higher rated than myself means that my chances at winning and even drawing the game are pretty low. I'm not too concerned with the result, because unless some crazy miracle happens like last game, it's, the result's kind of a foregone conclusion. We're just going to learn from it. Oh. A4 instead of knight e5. Oh, I've seen people do this. Yeah, pawn a4. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I see where this is going. Um... He just liquidates and he's up a solid pawn. Well, no. It's not so simple. Yeah, but last game we played an e4 opening, and one that I've played pretty regularly. This time we're playing an opening that I don't know. Um, I'm trying to learn some of this stuff, because I think it'd make chess more interesting. If I appreciated both how to play e4 and d4. Especially since I'm tired of seeing the same old e4 openings over and over. Um, like, I don't mind doing it um, several games, but seeing e4 openings every game is just getting exhausting. Um, so, yeah. Ideally, he'd want to put a bishop on d5, but I have e4 to counter that. Uh, even here I might have d5. Like, if I don't have d5, I'm screwed, so I have to play it. Um, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, oh well. But, yeah, if I can't get away with this, then my position's pretty bad. Um... I guess this blocks my bishop, but I don't have any choice here. Tactically, my knight is too loose for me to play anything else. Yeah, exchanging bishops could be fun. Um, my position's... I don't know, he's got two good bishops and I have two bad bishops. Um... That's kind of the distinguishing characteristic here. So I'm not sure that... Well, I guess in that case, exchanging bishops is probably a good thing, right? I'm just not sure that it's good enough. Like, okay, so now his g7 bishop isn't really that great. Um, yikes. I have to play a4. Try to liquidate this stuff before it gets too out of control, but he's still up a pawn. There's nothing I can do to stop that. Uh, you're right that it is unusual, but strong players have a way of making their pieces good. Um... Yeah, actually, this is just not really good at all for white. Um, yeah, I don't have a plan here, and my position just keeps degrading, so we're going to resign that. 
Which seems like, like the most premature resignation ever, but whatever. Um, so yeah, maybe I can do better than whatever happened here last time. So D4, we exchange on C6. This time I'll try for better peace activity. Yeah, I, I had some, but I was not at all happy with it. Um, right, so knight f5. We exchange. Okay, he plays h3. And I don't bungle my move order this time. Um, like, bishop e7 is fine. Bishop e6 is the main move. That's the point with playing an early bishop e7 is that if he plays g4, you have knight h4. Yeah. I didn't see any tactic for me to, like, win any material there. Maybe I just completely overlooked something, but... I think I was a, um, not gaining material there. Maybe I'm just like way pessimistic about that. I don't know. So here I could play uh, this. The key point is that like he's got to play king h2 or king g2 here, else I just play h5. Oh. Wait, no, he's got f4. I got all my lines crossed again. Uh, this is even worse. Uh, how am I going to contend with this? Uh, how am I going to contend with this? I don't know. How did I mess this up? It's amazing. Um, I don't understand. So, yeah, um, let's get my rook out of this diagonal from b2 to h8. I draw an arrow, except the arrows are pretty much the same color as the board. Um, I don't think I should actually use her style. I could, like, make brilliant blue arrows, or, like, cyan arrows or something. Something that stands out a lot more than what I got. Um, that would be a nice adjustment for me to make for my stream. Like, I've, I did something fun with the atomic colors for explosions, um... So they look like bright blue as the first phase of an explosion or something. Whereas normally those would appear in like bright white or something, but that looked too abrasive. Um, wait a sec. Do I have rook a5, a4, oh, a3? No, I don't. Rook a5, a4, b5 could have been interesting, but he's just got a3 on move 1. I've got nothing there. Um, so I'm going to exchange rooks on the file, um, try to encourage a4, I guess, even though I don't want to see that move. Ideally I'd be pushing my doubled pawns, except I know they can't capture this c pawn. Um, but at least in this configuration I can sack a pawn to open something. Assuming he takes, which he probably won't. Yeah, I could hold shift, but then um, Waterfox will put a context menu up. Even if I'm drawing arrows, it'll still put up the menus, which is distracting. Um, and besides, uh, I, the next color is red, and that doesn't look that great on this color board either. Um... 
so I've anchored my pawn on a5. Uh-oh. He's got rook d7. Um, rook d7 in this position is bad news. Um, so I have to capture. Um, do I have any tactical tricks here to help hold this against rook d7? He's also got rook f1, rook f7 now. Um, it's not looking good. Well, so if I exchange rooks, I'm pretty sure this endgame is just lost. Like, super duper lost. Um, oh, that's not bright. That's not bright. Because he could have played bishop b2. This is me being a little tricky and or cheeky, I suppose, with tactics that we would never see in any other position. Um, well, we're not going to step into the discovery. Okay, somehow I thought I had this planned out with like B4. Um, no such luck, eh? Oh right, he's got rook f8 check. That's the key point. So I have to sidestep that. Oh, but then he just promotes. Yeah, he's got that. Jeez. What the heck? I play this thing, like, all the time, and I got move ordered. What the heck happened? I can't do h6 and b6. h6 and b6 does not work. What in the world? What's going on here? I don't understand. Master's database. So... Bishop b2. b6 has been played. g4. This is not even transposed to something from Master Games. This looks like extra super good for white. How could Masters have not found this? Yeah, the king, kingside pawn storm is a common thematic idea, but typically white doesn't just get to completely have everything he wants with black getting nothing. Like, something extraordinary happened here. And I don't understand it. I mean, how is it that I sometimes get away with b6? Is my problem that I shouldn't have... Yeah, I think my problem is that I played both bishop e7 and h6. Which is just not necessary and also not helpful. Yeah, I guess masters never play h6 and that sort of thing. But it, also b3 is not played. Like, I'm used to seeing bishop g5, g4, and rook d1. I've never seen b3 in this position. And it makes good sense. There are plenty of other positions where you want to play b3. But, um, and you would think that this position, if not by this move order would be achieved by some other move order. Like, if white just plays h3 in a position where he's already played b3. Um, I 
Yeah. I didn't get h6. It's pretty much played to prevent knight g5, but I, right, so that's what I was saying, is I should not have played h6 here. Um, there's also h5, rook h6. Oh, okay, so there's this pro proactive thing I can do. Um, right. Against h3, knight g5. Yeah, so it's just been too long since I've played any of this, but I think my main move here is bishop e6. And then I've seen b3 here. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can transpose and mix and match. Um, sometimes you do elect to play h6, sometimes you just simply play... Oh my goodness, this is hanging again. Um, yeah, sometimes you do play h6, sometimes you just play bishop e7. Um... I would show this on the board, but apparently my browser's just out to lunch. Oh, the stream broke. Am I dropping frames? I am not dropping frames, it's just like my everything is stuck. Um, hey, it moved. It did move. Very good. Um, yeah, I guess I should go back to playing some games then. If I can't analyze stuff, then um, might as well play some games. Um, so you're saying what? It's more common to play bishop d7 if you go out and go to the queen side. Oh! I've never seen bishop d7 as an idea in that opening. YOLO! Now this is actually decent. It's not completely ridiculous like I'm making it sound. Um, this is ridiculous. Oh. Okay. Um, okay, so we expose my rook along that file. Um, I think we might have ventured from opening book at some point. Uh, okay, so this is like a Cambridge Springs, Cambridge Hot Springs. That's what we're, or I don't know. This needs some cheesy opening name. Um, I guess springs and hot springs are synonymous. I need, I need a cheesy name to give this thing. Because this is all about that cheese. I might even castle king's side, just to spite my opponent. Arguably d5 is hanging. Oh. Oh, right. Um... So you know that thing I said about castling, it's probably still happening. Here we are, we're just down a bishop. Um, so this is like the Cambridge Springs fishing pole, um, bass somatic, 9,000. Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing. Just this cheap shot. Um, which isn't even that good. Alright, we'll take the pawn. We're attacking another pawn. Um, okay, we'll attack the knight again. Alright, might as well attack it. Oh, never mind. That doesn't help. Let's just defend this pawn. Now, if he moves the wrong rook, I can take both of these pawns in succession. He does not move the wrong rook. Um, Alright, so... I don't know, maybe time for a rook lift? No, let's... Let's just push this pawn. Um, 
Oh, that's right. His queen is defended by the knight. Alright, so... Yeah. Might take a small miracle to win this. We're only down a minute. That's gonna happen. Don't worry, we got this. Just gotta get a back rank mate. With, oh, like, his bishop actually defends that, so I don't even have the back rank shenanigans. Oh, man. Uh, how am I supposed to shenanigans without... I don't know. Okay, so... Free pawn? I guess we just try to play good moves. Um, just challenging when you're down a piece. That can still be done. So many weaknesses. Alright, so now what? Everybody's everything is hanging. Um... Suppose we take here, and if knight c3, bishop takes f2. Yeah, he probably did have a forced mate there somewhere. Um, if, well, I don't know. He probably did. He did actually try to look for it. Um, so I'm not going to blame him for not trying. Um... He could have, but he didn't. But yeah, he, he definitely probably had it there. Because my position is just bad. Um, whereas here, I've only got this check. And some other checks to follow, maybe. Um... So my bishop would be hanging, except um, I'm threatening to promote, which takes priority over my hanging bishop. Um, so then he blocks the promotion. And do I try to force this through? No, because that gets me mated. So instead we take here. And if the knight moves, then I've got rook c1. Unless the knight moves to e2. Um, so yeah, we got three pawns for a knight. Interesting material imbalance there. Um, not so interesting when you're on the receiving end of a tactic. So, like I was saying, two pawns for the knight. Just gotta try like rook takes, and then I just move out of the way, because I don't want to lose a rook or a bishop. Um, arg. That hurts. That's me not planning properly, uh, as I have only a few seconds remaining. So the question is, can he win this up two pieces for two pawns? The answer is probably. We'll find out. Um...
Oops, you can just take that. Yeah, that's no good. This is no good still. Um, once he figures a way to liquidate the rooks, this is just terrible. There's the shot. Check. It's a very important check, by the way. Okay. Well, um, uh, shouldn't be proud of that. But yeah, um, two second increment is still pretty tense. For like all the people who say that increment completely ruins all the time pressure in a blitz game, it really doesn't. It just means that that time pressure just keeps increasing over time. Whereas like you try to win uh, a blitz game that has no increment, all you're doing is just shuffling pieces trying to, um, I don't know. Trying to move faster than the other guy. If you have at least this increment there, not only do you have to shuffle the pieces quickly, you've got to find good moves. Yeah, time pressure is still very much present uh, with an increment. Um, all right, we've got, never mind. We've got new opponent. I didn't catch whether that was the same opponent name or not. Um, I think that this pool respects... Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe it doesn't respect blocks. Either way, maybe what I need to do is like play in a tournament or something. I was going to see if there's a way I could start a thematic tournament. Um, All right, so we've got a Queen's Gambit declined. So, um, I think this sort of system would appeal most to me of the Queen's Gambit lines. Okay, but now we're into a semi-slav. Um, Oh, right, so if I play this, black can just take on c4. I forgot. <sighs> and so, to that end, like I've seen in semi Slavs with like a6, you play a4. But here, I don't know. I forget what's like the anti Moran or whatever, what you're supposed to play. Okay, so this doesn't look too convincing either. Um, I really just want a sack sack mate over there, but it's not even remotely there. Um, but 98. 98 does not look like a developing move to me. And sure, he can play f6, trying to build up to e5. Um, what happens if I just develop this? Do 
do I not have pressure against the center? I think there's more, like, I think I'm going to have better bishops. Oh, that would hang a bishop. That would hang a bishop, which would not be so good. So yeah, we'll exchange bishops so I don't hang one. But do I not have good pressure of some sort somewhere? Maybe c5 was wrong. Um, I just didn't see what else I could try in this position where I'm clearly trying to advance in the center and if possible deny this e5 advance, but I don't think I can. I don't have b4 to support my c pawn. Um, on the other hand, I think a5 is mistimed because, well, tactics, actually. Just snap, there's a pawn. And do I take pawn number two, or is that just ridiculous? probably loses material if I take pawn number two there. Well, no, if he moves the knight, I've got knight e7 check, and then I just go back. So, so this is check. Um, and then I could run away with my rook. trying to find something better. Running away looks awfully courageous here. Uh, let me take this. If only this knight weren't there. This position would be just devastate his king side. Uh, I could play rook c5 though. Um, like threaten all the cheapos in the world. Stupid still got like his bishop and knight out, but if by some miracle, uh, well, that doesn't work. So yeah, we've got to break up the king side. But I can still like transfer the rook to h5, even if I can't necessarily sack. Um, all right, so now we've got material for uh, the rook, but also we've got like fun attacking stuff. Um, and no time in which to execute said stuff. Wow, he's really fixated on that threat. Oh, that's a pin. That's a clever pin. I guess I'll submit to this pin. I blew it. I so blew it. None of my cheapos work. My king is on the wrong square. Oh, but now if he double sacks, he gets... No, he doesn't get my knight. Yes, he does. Uh, once my knight ends up on f5, it is very much doomed. Um... Okay, so I'm going to protect the knight. 
which does nothing for me. Um, all right, so we're like down everything. Queen f2 mates. No, it doesn't, because I have king d3. I wish it did, because then I could end this game. Um, Oh, we got a block. Better push my D pawn before it's too late. Let's go, D pawn. Let's go. You can do it. Probably not, but let's believe. Oh, well, okay, there goes that plan. Um, yeah, we can concede this. All right, so. Um, he offers a rematch. Ah. Okay. Let's really mix this up. you're going to play like one of these Nimzo F3 things but not develop any of your pieces, we'll counter with a Benko. Um, there goes this castling. So if he moves the bishop, then that's that, but else I think we've transposed into a proper Benko. Except now he's got a pawn in F3 instead of a knight there. which should somehow make this easier for me. Oh, well, no, people in tournaments don't do that. Part of the reason they don't do that is because I um, always look for fireworks in my games. Um, so, like... If they try to do something to make the position dull and uninteresting, then I look uh, for the riskiest possible continuation. Um, it's just kind of how I play. It tends to backfire quite a bit. Um, however, um, scoring the full point does still require technique. Um, so when players, I don't know, mess up the end game and fail to convert, um, then that's where I get a number of my points from. Um, okay, so... Uh, is this one of those positions where, yeah, I think I just take here, and um, I'm crashing through. Like, he hasn't castled, his rook on h1 is not that great. Uh, he could push the b-pawn, that is legal. Um... I'm not sure that pushing the pawn actually helps him. Oh, now that I think more about it, this check is pretty hard to meet, isn't it? Um, so let's just set up a discovery. And then I've got threats of queen e2, as well as queen to b5 to b1. Um, Alright, so I think the fastest mate here is just rook b1 check. And if he blocks the queen, I take the queen. If he moves the king, queen e2 is mate. Um,
There we go. That works. Yeah, I don't think his F3 was the greatest innovation ever. Alright, so Bishop G5 is a bit... Okay, while it is enterprising, I think I should do something a bit calmer. Um, and by that, I think something more like this. Better suit my... Um, I don't know, everything at... Oh, but in these things I'm supposed to take on d5. Alright, so we'll play a4 and end up in some crazy Moran thing. I assume this is the Moran. I could be completely off base. This might be some other opening. But... Let's see... I think I can go back and collect the pawn, at least. Oh, was there a free knight on c3? Maybe there was at one point, I'm not sure. If so, that would have greatly simplified everything we just looked at. Um, but I didn't see any such thing. Alright, so... Queen c2, I think, is thematic in a number of these, like, Bogo slash Nimzo structures. I assume despite the fact he's got this rook c8 potentially lined up, I think I'm okay. I don't want to push e4 if I don't have to commit to that. So we'll just keep delaying developing my bishop until I have a good destination for it. Um... Right, so he's intending c5. Okay, good. Good to hear that it wasn't a free knight. Or at least that I'm not the only person who thinks that it wasn't. Um, Alright, so he puts his rook over on the f file. I could drop my... No, I can't drop my queen back, because he's got too many pieces attacking my c3 knight. Um... This looks disgusting, but I don't see anything better. This bishop controls a lot of squares. Oh, so running away. Is that what we're doing today? Okay. Um, well, I'll run away too. You can see who can run faster. Um, you know, if I didn't have a5 here, I'd just keep retreating my pieces backward. But since I have a5, let's try to open the file. Do a rook lift, like rook a5 to h5. The subtle threat here. Um, yeah, he's not letting me do the rook lift. That's not cool, man. Thought my opponent was cool. No, I didn't. I lied. Um, but we'll take here. Because having a rook on an open file can't be a bad thing. So we'll just subtly move our knight over to g5 when he's not looking. Um, maybe he'll exchange on a1, maybe not. I'm not in any hurry to put his queen on a8, so we're going to take this path. Doesn't that blunder a rook? I'm... The black took the pawn on a5, rook takes as the queen takes our rook. Oh, you're saying did my move just blunder a pawn? That I can't defend my pawn? Um, maybe. If that was actually threatened, then yeah, I just hung the pawn for nothing. 
Um, was that the case? Oh yeah, that's just a free pawn. But, I mean, it's not that hard for him to, or it's pretty difficult for him to retain that. Um, uh, which way? This way it looks fine. Yeah, that would have been a free pawn if he had just taken on a5. Although then he'd have doubled a pawns and my rook would be staring down right at them, so... Might not be the easiest double pawns to hold on to forever. Um, I'm thinking I might play bishop e3. Because uh, it's tricky for him to attack that. Yikes. Okay, so... So now what? So now we finally resolve this tension. Do I get to play queen? No, queen a2 just drops a queen. Um, oh fuck, I'm dropping a pawn. Oops. Yeah, that's not so great. That's not so great. Wait, free rook ish, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm totally winning this now that I got that rook. So he moves the knight. Oh, he didn't move his knight. Ah, this cuts off my queen from defending the knight, so I have to protect like this. Alright, that's not cool, man. Let me guess, he checks me? He checks me not? He checks me? He checks me not? He checks me? He's trying to come up with a good tricky move. I approve. I certainly approve of such deviousness. Um, yeah, that's pretty devious too. Well done, sir. Oh, let's check also. And then queen h1 mate. Well done. All right, he wants a rematch. I guess I'm giving up points tonight. Um, wait, knight of six is how I counter this stuff. This is what I've prepared. This is what I know. This is what I don't know, because I don't believe at all in this F3 nonsense. Um, all right, what's the distinction that you're seeking to make here? Check. Is this really what White intended? I don't even want to take that. I mean, yes, he's up a pawn. I could regain the pawn, but I don't want it. At least not that way. Plus, I could take that any time.
So do I go queen b6 or do I go queen b4? I think queen b4 makes more sense because I'm threatening bishop takes followed by queen takes pawn. I'm also threatening queen takes b2, which is super risky, but... Oh, is my stream somehow lagging still? I know I'm streaming it. I did drop 12 frames over my entire stream, but, um, yeah. No, I'm, I am doing 20 frames per second. So, worst case, um, either Twitch is dropping something, or you missed the one very important second in my entire session here. I will never know. Yeah, knight g4 sounds interesting in principle. I'm not seeing how the move is legal in any one of the positions that we're looking at, but um, maybe that's something I should look into at this opening here. Either way, so now, however he recaptures this, I can snap e4. And I guess king f2 is best. Uh, let's just develop. Because he can't block with the queen or I'd take on b1. And I'm threatening like knight d3 as well as just taking a2 and... You know, if I had another bishop or another knight, that'd be pretty great. Uh, I know I don't, but I can dream. Um, okay, so... Oh. He seeks more exchanges. And can I win this endgame? Do I have any choice but to do this exchange? I mean, I almost always have a choice, but here, in this specific position, um, I think this is my best option. Whether or not it's enough, I don't know, but it looks very nice. And the reason it looks so nice is because, uh, well, I don't know if I should take a2 or should I play rook a5. Um, rook a5 looks super nice. Oh wow, he's offering an exchange. I don't think he appreciates that a bishop is super strong on an open board like this. Like, this endgame is not at all easy for white to hold. And I say hold because even though he has the outside pass pawn, I am up a pawn. Um, and I have the bishop. So, uh, the slightest tactical error will go strongly in my favor. Uh, I also had bishop a4, which is... Probably still best here. So we'll hit that too. Okay, so we'll take one of these. And we'll take one of those. and see how many of these kingside pawns he's willing to give away. Um, I 
All right, your turn. If the queen blocked the check, yeah. I guess probably there was something there. Yeah, bishop a4 is pretty strong. Boop! Okay, now the rook can't block both check threats. Um, he can still do, like, rook b8 check and knight e7 check. Um, and he can try to be annoying. Um, boop a doop a doop, boop a doop a doop. We have to have some fun with this, guys. Look at all the pawns. This is how a pawn moves. Goes one space at a time. And we just push the pawn, and then we push the pawn, and then we push the pawn, and then we push the pawn. Okay. He offers a rematch. You know, some people do resign when... Yeah. I mean, I will... You've seen me resign. I do resign. When it's pretty clear that my opponent can win and I can't do anything to change that. that that's kind of the point where I do the thing that I think to be appropriate there. Alright, so... Um, okay, so now we found how to exchange pawns to not go into that nonsense. Oh yeah, no, he had decent stalemating chances if I were like a drunk idiot, sure. Um, I was very, very much alert and aware of that possibility. Yeah, no, if I, I just play a bad move, yeah, sure. Um... Okay, so, I mean, I guess that gives some people hope that if their opponent plays badly, that maybe they redeem themselves or something. Um, I mean, certainly you've seen I've tried to play on some pretty ridiculous endgames, in part because I have an audience here, but I'm not just banking on my opponent stalemating me. Um, I'm playing pretty vigorously in these positions where I'm lost. Um, Alright, let's not forget that I got this knight pinned. Because, like, three times already I've forgotten that that's a pin. Um, Alright, so we set up a discovery. Got a challenge from somebody. From Blunderman. Alright, I guess, yeah, we'll play Blunderman next. Um, whenever this guy's done challenging me here. Um, so if I take there... If I take there... Okay. Tactics do not favor me this time. Um, but if I play Queen F4 first, does any of that change? Oh, then he plays Knight E6. And what changes is that the tactics really don't favor me anymore. Um, things go from, like, not that great to pretty not great. Um, so how do I change that trend? Knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes... Oh, wait, what? This just wins a piece. It's like super common and thematic. 
I calculated this. This is the first thing I looked at. And somehow I didn't come up with the right conclusion. Which is just that this is awesome. Right, so then I take this. You take my queen. I take your bishop. And um, I'm up a rook. And I'm threatening to bring my other rook to e8 and win more material. Um... Alright, so I can't get my other rook there in time, but I can do this. And I can take that. And then we can play knight d6 and still collect the material. And if he plays like king f7 to try to stop me, then we take on c8. So, I'll take one of those. I'll take one of those. Yeah, I think Blunderman is going to be up next. If this opponent doesn't resign in, like, the next move or two. I think we need an opponent um, who understands when the game has ended. <laughs> I'm joking uh, somewhat here. Um, but... I mean, he's got so many pawns here that the chances of a stalemate are so low. Uh, I can't take take, so I have to do this first. This does block the c-pawn, but my rook's going to move in a second. And now I'm threatening rook h7 mate, and so he's going to play rook a1, and then rook g1, and then try to sack both of his pawns, and realize that I'm not going to take any of the pawns. Unless I want to be mean. How mean do I want to be? Um, yeah. Should I be mean? Doop doop doop. Let me think about this one. You resigned a drawn position. It's fine. You wouldn't have found it anyway. Oh, this calls for a bishop on f8, mate. Oh, okay. He did resign. Okay. Well, that was polite of him. I guess we'll give him one more. Um. Okay, let's just go into this. See if he's at all prepared for... Um, the Grunfeld. Apparently, we're going transposing into a Grunfeld. Into a really super ultra weird Grunfeld. Um, where white just gives up the deep on uh, move six. Um, and doesn't get any compensation. But also can't develop any of his pieces and has exposed his king. Yeah, that one. The one where, like, black's actually winning. Um, let's play that Grinfeld. So we check him here. I think he has to block with the queen, or he... Yeah. And then we take the bishop. Yeah, so that's the Grunfeld. Um, is Blunderman ready? Please never ever stream again in 3D. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... I need this because I've been doing the 2D pieces for too long. I need to do something different just for me. Um, okay. How about this? Oh. Okay, fine. Um, I don't want to immediately go into an endgame. Let's transpose yet again. And then go into this. 
Let's see how many times we can transpose this opening before um, it just turns into complete nonsense. All right, so he takes an F3. Can I get away? No. Uh, it doesn't quite work. All right, so we got to do this. Um, how do I make an opening out of this one? I think I take the B pawn. Oh, we had to bishop b5 for the next transformation. Or transposition. Um, there we go, bishop b5. Successfully transposed into something. Um, what this is, I don't know. Oh, it's a delayed bong cloud. Alright. Or oh, I'm sorry, bong cloud deferred, as they prefer to call it. Um, we can make this the bong cloud with a chance of meatballs. Um, yeah, I don't know. We've got a thing that's maybe happening. So, my bishop's protected. Oh, I could fishing pull this with a4. It's the deferred bomb cloud, cloudy with a chance of meatballs, fishing pole. Um, also, do I just, like, take the knight, sack the queen? I mean, how good is a queen in this position anyway? Let's find out. It's probably a useful piece, actually. Um... Alright, knight a3, throwing in some um, queenside zug bag thing. There we go. And we got this McCutcheon pin variation. And we castle. But our king is very vulnerable here. Um, so. That's an opening, maybe. Oh, my bishop is hanging. Uh, bishop is dead. Well, not quite. Not quite. I just might have castled the wrong way. Uh, we need to castle the other way. Yeah, Blunderman's got this pretty... Oh. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I I do know when to resign. Um, I'm actually debating that right now. Like, if you can find the mate, um, then yeah. But as long as I've got something that might be a fortress that's a little bit different. <laughs> ah, the spinning icons. Okay, so yeah, there it is, c5, there's, I can't do any, well, I can do something to delay this. Um, and if I want to try to, like, not be completely doomed, we're going to put the bishop on a strong square here. Um it's surprisingly tricky to for black to penetrate this thing. Um, <laughs> with enough add-ons, you can see through Twitch's lies. Or you could just have plain text. And see the arrows in your heart. So I'm hitting the C-pawn. Bringing me one step closer to victory. 
Um, So if I can like not lose the F pawn, that would probably help me. I don't want to push the F pawn because oh. Ooh, that kind of stings. Alright, yeah, we can concede it there. There are ways that I could draw it out a little bit longer, but yeah, I missed that. And this pawn just runs. He found the hole in my um fortress. All right, this is a pretty close position. Um, White's got a slight initiative. Um, but yeah, the mistakes are all there, just waiting to be made. Oh, there there it is. Mistake number one. No. All right. Vive la France! Um, I don't play the French often. So. No, that's cool. That's cool. It was an interesting game. Alright, we got an exchange French. The best kind of French defense. Alright. Wait, what? Uh, we take this, develop another piece, oh man, his bishop covers h2, <sighs> never lucky, never lucky, alright, so, here we go, playing the, I don't know what you want to call this, it lacks a witty name. Oh man. So I hit your B pawn. It's the poison pawn, French, German, Slav, Dutch thing. Um. Okay, so now his knight is off sides. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see that my queen was attacked there. Thankfully, I had it defended. Um, so that's prophylaxis. Defending pieces before you hang them it is definitely a form of prophylaxis. Um, yeah. Didn't see that that was a fork. I was just seeing, like, I had b2 and a4 and d4 forked. But, I didn't see that I was also hitting the queen. Um. Alright, so of course he's trying to do the Noah's Ark trap. Um. So I have to counter with h6. Which does entomb my bishop, but... Oh. Also, my bishop does get trapped anyway. Um... Hmm. Alright, how do I counter this? It's not so good. Well, we counter this with... I don't know. We're going to have some kind of kingside counterattack planned. And it's going to be brilliant somehow. So we sack the bishop on purpose. 
and see how much mileage we can get for it. Right, so we have to take so as not to lose the rook. Um, and then we attack the pinned pawn. Presumably he defends it. I attack it again. He might defend it again. I attack the rook. And we pin the rook. So we check, uh, it doesn't win material. Uh, I think I have to check anyway. It's not glorious. Oh. Yeah, that just walks into a skewer, unfortunately. Somehow you might, I don't know. I don't know what the condition is on the other end of the internet, but first game um, was definitely sharp. The second game, yeah, it was sharp enough to catch me off guard. Um, once again, we've proven that the French is a refuted opening. Either that or I'm just, I like fall asleep playing it and I should just stick to the main line there. Um, yeah, we got a challenge. From Regicide, 1763. All right. All right, here we go. Well, let's try the French again. It seemed to be reasonable. Okay, I'll show you an advanced French. There we go. We've got like a Dutch, but without all the downsides of having actually played the Dutch. Um, Alright, have a good night, Blunderman. Alright, there we go. Pushing all the center pawns. Um, bring out the knight, just to camouflage what we're actually doing here. But also this delays d4. Or does it? Pawn takes, knight takes. No, it doesn't really stop it. Doesn't even delay it. But we'll push past. Um, defend the knight. If he plays b4, oh man. Now if he plays b4... <laughs> When comes the part where I get to be subtle about this? Presumably never. Oh, this is actually a useful attack. Not only am I threatening the cheapo, I need to check out that pawn structure. Best pawn structure ever. Um... All right. Yeah, we've got to hit the bishop here. Um, and then develop our. Oh, never mind. That's not development. Haha. Uh -huh, just kidding. I meant. Um, I guess we ex hit the exposed pawn. But then I'm going to put my bishop right in front of my rook. Unless I can muster enough pressure to actually do something here. Um, maybe I can. Maybe just throw it all into a king's, uh, queenside attack. Um... Uh-oh. There's one little detail here. Don't tell him. 
one little detail that makes that a little bit hairy. All right, so uh, I actually do have to move the queen now as opposed to next move. Monkey wrenches abound. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, here maybe? Uh, can't be that bad. Just getting d5 is probably better. Can I save it? Have you seen me play endgames? We can save it, maybe. Maybe not. We'll only know if we try. Um. So, he's threatening stuff on the king's side. He's threatening a lot of stuff. I actually need my rook back here on the 7th to deal with most of the stuff that he's threatening. It's not so easy for white to push an attack because his bishop is on the same color square as all of his pawns, except for the g-pawn. So, yeah, I should probably stop trying to play coffee house chess and try to play better moves here. Um, coffee housing is good fun, though. So I've got to activate this bishop. And I'm not going to be able to take on c3, apparently. Or rather, the bishop serves a better purpose on c7 than it does on a5. Oh, but now, now this is a different tune. Now taking on c3 is actually something to look out for. Um, I mean, clearly he's intending knight to e7, but... Um, like, that's the whole point of this bishop maneuver, is to guard this one specific square in my camp so his knight can move there. Um, and so now he deliberates over knight g6. Oh, he can't do that. The knight's pinned. He's got to do this first. Um, so we chop a pawn. I think I can get away with this. If I can, then d4 might be next. Either way, hopefully my a6 bishop serves a useful role soon. Maybe I should have chopped b2 first. I don't know. I got a bit anxious about it. Understandably, because my position is kind of sketchy. Um, so my idea here is to not let h6 drop for free. Um, Alright, that rook on b7 has done a useful job. Let's move it. Oh. I can't do bishop takes f2. At least not to win material. So we're going to develop this way instead, and then drop back to b7 or b8, as is appropriate. Um, wow, that's clever. Um, that stinks. I goofed. I super goofed. Okay, well, um, we get to learn something about pawn structures. Oh, never mind, he's not taking that. Alright, so... Um, never mind about pawn structures and bishops and fortress possibilities. We're not quite there. We're somewhere else here. Um...
man, what an adventure this is going to be. Fuck. <laughs> That's going to get complicated. Um, I have to take here. Uh, damn it. Okay, this is better. Okay, so now the king's going to make a bold dash across the board. Um, unless I can find a better way to activate my pieces. Boldly dashing it is. Oh, actually, this pawn could be useful as it stands right there. Um... Could also be not so useful. Uh, okay. This way we go. Perfectly safe. End games are hard. Like people. I don't know. Um, end games are really hard. So what I was contemplating at the end here was Queen A1, Bishop B1. And I don't know where we go next, but hopefully my king takes the f-pawn. Yeah, and two-second increment does not make it any easier. Um, so, wow. What a game. Um, okay, so... We've got the Alyokin thing, except the knight's back on f6. Um, okay, so let me push this forward. Oh, damn it, I should have moved this somewhere else was not thinking very clearly. Uh, okay, we're... how about one more square back? And then... I don't know. I guess I have to kick this, because otherwise bishop a6 happens. Um, I prefer that it not happen under such a favorable circumstance. And likewise, my D pawn's a bit loose, so let's push now while I can still have it adequately defended. And then let's crash through here. Now, is this the thing where I'm supposed to play knight G5? Is this that special position? Knight G5 looks fun. But is it good? Um, well, there's one way to answer this. Ask an engine. No, I'm not using an engine, just to clarify, but that would answer the question. Um, Okay, so I think I've not done this very accurately. This is not looking very accurate at all. Um, 
so I guess I don't even see a way to bail out decently. Did he try the same tactic he missed on me last game? Oh. Maybe. Um. Alright. Is he gonna do it? He did it! Yeah! Victory! <laughs> oh dear. Um. Just because you can capture a thing does not mean you're forced to capture the thing. Although, in situations like that, it helps, but yeah, taking on d5 was not... I don't think that was necessary there. So... Oh, you were looking... okay. Yeah. Yeah, this this is a nice one. I think I've seen it in like Pandolfini's Traps and Zaps or something. He's written a couple books. Or maybe it was Bruce Albertson or somebody? I don't remember. But there's some books called Traps and Zaps, which are full of ridiculous stuff like that. Where like if every piece is on exactly the wrong square, then there's the one tactic that makes it all worth it. It's a pretty ridiculous book, but it shows some fun ideas that like rarely crop up in classical games. But might crop up in your Blitz games. You never know. Um, boop! Um, yeah, good old Traps and Zaps. The Chess Bible? Okay. Uh, that's a pretty profound um, label for such a silly book. All right. Here we go, Sicilian. Oh, Kelly Sicilian. Um. Well, I named the opening, so now I should be proud or something. Um, but I think this is okay for black. Once you've gotten this far. Yeah, it's... Peace placement is kind of important. Um, I think this is fine. Five e five for the Turbo Svishnikov. Oh, oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I've got to try five e five sometime. Did not realize that possibility, but now I see it. Hey guys, you know Traps and Zaps? There it is. I found it. How long was that been there? Um, one? Oh, okay. So it was only there for one move before I found it. Okay. I suddenly feel much less embarrassed about it. That's why 3d4 is inaccurate. Oh, okay. I got, yeah, I knew there was num numerous reasons that that move ordering is just bad. Um, but the Turbo Sveshnikov seems awesome, especially compared to, like, the normal Sveshnikov that I play. Um, let's just put this here. Not threatening anything at all, really. Oh, we saw it. Okay. Well, we tried. 
Verily we attempted. Um, well, I don't have any way to keep cheesing here. I guess I'll just need to start playing um, developing moves. I want to get my queen out of this skewer. Um, so go from the window to the wall. Not sure if that was the best way to do that. Alright, so he attacks my everything. Can I protect my everything? I can. There we go. So if I want to preserve queenside castling rights, I would just play queen takes b8 if he does knight takes. Um, so, ah, where's the fun in not doing this? Queenside castle. Totally inappropriate. But we're doing it. Um, okay, I should have a plan to follow up the queenside castle. Otherwise, it just looks ridiculous. So, we're going to push for f4. There's f4. Couldn't just take the knight. Uh, I thought I had a thing hanging somewhere. If not, then yeah, we could just take in the knight. Um. So, we'll see how far this gets. I'm not expecting it to get very far. But, if we don't try it, we'll never know. Um, we have delusions of grandeur, as somebody from Wicked might say. Let's try defying gravity. Oh, right. So I guess I have to take here. And I'm losing my bishop. So pawn takes bishop, pawn takes... Okay. Uh, somehow that worked. Ish. So now I just have to make sure my bishop doesn't get like stranded on the edge of the board actually finds gainful employment somewhere. Um, like here. That's a good square for bishop. Wait, we're up three pawns? Cool. I guess when we kept taking all those pawns on the king side, that's how we got up three pawns. Um, So, lots of tactics are in this position. Um, such as, I'm going to attack a pawn um, and then take it. That's a tactic. Um, So we have to deal with this rook b8 and then rook d7 skewer, or rook, b, rook d1 skewer thing. 
Um, oh, that's clever. That is really nice. Um, yeah, he's found a way to invade. Um, very nicely done. Bishop F2. Oh wait, oh man, now I don't get to show off my, damn it, you ruined my tactic. Okay, I was going to sack my rook for the bishop, it was going to be beautiful. Okay, fine, so back here, bishop f2, rook takes f2, rook takes e3, exploiting the pin. I have it all set up. Uh, you guys will just have to imagine how that would have worked. Um, okay. Are we going to Grunfeld this? We got a Grunfeld. I don't know all the Grunfeld theory. Oh. My opponent does not know all the Grunfeld theory either. Um... Something seems fishy already. Like, no c5? Is it possible to play a Grinfeld without c5? Alright, here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, um, tactical possibilities abound. Everywhere. Here a tactic, there a tactic. Everywhere a tactic. Um, oh, that would just hang my knight, maybe. Oh my goodness. I've got too many good moves. I don't usually find myself in such a position. Um. Um, indeed. YOLO! <laughs> We're gonna go with idea number one that I saw which has a huge challenge. Um, the challenge is what if he does this, which he did. And then I saw I could do this. And we're like way out of theory now. But this is probably OK, maybe. Um, So back we go. I was tempted to go to h3, but this exchange seems fine. Um, so then we play f4, maybe? I don't know. This is spooky. This is like super spooky. Um, oh, but I can't push d5 here because of my king's location. Um, yeah, you have to do c5. That makes sense. It's just, I have some difficult questions that I have to answer here.
King F1. Exclamation point, question mark. Other scribble. So... This gives me some counterplay. Um, then we plug that. All right, do I have to take the knight? I think, well, no, I don't, not yet. I could throw this in first. Uh, this might not be a good idea. Oh, but now it works. I confused him. So mission accomplished, but um, that shouldn't have worked so smoothly. Oh, I should have moved my other bishop. Damn it. I miss a brilliancy of sorts. Okay, so can we get... There we go, there we go. Now all the pawns are blocked by the bishop. Yep, and then we put this in front. And say those aren't moving. Oh, then we open the file. Oh, he did undermine my pawns, but I'm still fine. Alright, we'll go back. See if he does sack. If this doesn't prompt him to sack, nothing will. He does sack. So then we pose the rook. And if the rook moves away, we've got some tactics, maybe. Um, let's check here. So close, and yet so far. All right, so, oh wait, that's attacked. We can't just let it sit there. I can't take that, but I could play f4. Um, ha! That could have gone better. I should have played this to prevent e5. It does not work so well in response to e5 as it would have done trying to prevent e5. There it is. Check that out. <laughs> uh, nobody sees it coming, because like, the bishop was protecting the h8 square until the rook dropped onto f6. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good game, well played. Uh, that's fine. Wow. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I guess to to analyze this. Um, actually, this defies abilities. Uh, this would make Shankir, the musician, 
the person who invented Shinkirian analysis. That would make him um, squeamish, as he would not be able to analyze this game. Um, yeah, something happened, and then more things happened. And oh wait, there is one thing though. This bishop d6, he could have played queen b7, hitting the h1 rook. And then I'm kind of SOL. So, yeah, I had to just take this. I saw, well, I was afraid of him doing something, but I didn't actually look. I would be lying uh, to say that I looked. You'd have to ask um, National Master John Chernoff or Zug Addict what Shankirian analysis is. Unless there happens to be a music aficionado out here. Because um, I never studied it. I just know that it's a thing and it's like super complicated about identifying trends inside of a... or identifying motifs uh, inside a musical work. Um, I'll check it out. We got this thing. Whatever this is. It's a London. So I always counter with this because I never figured out what to do about this B2 pawn. Um, but yeah, it has to do with identifying short-term and long-term musical motifs and how the rhythms and the melodies and so forth all add up and compare it to one another and... Oh, Knight C3, of course. Yeah. Funny you should mention that. I actually had, when we were doing the ladder games, um... I had a ladder game that I think went knight c3 here. It was um, yeah, an unfortunate swindle. But I figure if my opponent's going to get something by playing bishop f4, uh, I should get something in return. This should not just be a one-sided exchange where he gets control of stuff and I don't get anything. And so I do play queen b6. Um, uh, okay. Of course, all I mentioned that pertains to music doesn't really pertain to chess directly. Um, Alright. So, yeah, there's not a one-to-one -one analog there by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, knight c3 might actually be a decent gambit. Taking this b-pawn doesn't seem like the wisest move in the world. Um, hey, do you suppose I'll be able to like play queen b7 and take the g-pawn too? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Um, that might be a little too much to be believable. Um, Alright, so we'll just back up. before he hits my queen. Also, this has the benefit that I can chop another pawn and delay um, doing reasonable develop for one more turn. So let's see how long I can put off actually doing development. I think I've hit my limit there. I think I'm forced to start making reasonable moves. Um, so we're gonna Fianchetto and Castle. Alright, so over here we go. Until he plays h3 and g4 and then we swing to the other side of the board and I don't know. Something something. Thankfully, there's no way he can drop a knight on c7. This is not bug house, so I'm safe. Yeah, 
Though honestly, even if this were bug house, um, I'd probably still be okay. All right, so can I get away with pawn d6? Um, well, I guess my point of pawn d6 is that I'm trying to encourage an exchange that he seems to be opting for anyway. I should just be playing like bishop b7, although it's super risky here. Um... All right, he's hitting my e pawn. We'll defend the e pawn. Uh, he's trying to trap my queen in some kind of subtle net, but I've got h3 if he pushes g4. So, um, so I'll just play a London. Development is so 18th century. That seems legit. Uh, yeah. Before I trade my good bishop for this knight, um, let's try to play some good moves to cancel out the bad ones. Even though I haven't played too many bad moves this game. Okay. There's a good move. That cancels out anything that I can do to follow it. Um, oh! Surprise! The surprise resignation. Alright. Maybe I need to play longer time controls. Maybe 3 2 is just too fast. Well, it was a London. In fact, how does my opponent reply to the London? Does he have a reply? Ah, he plays e6. How does... Oh, I just so want to play h4 to spike this, but that seems unwise. So we'll just play a more sober London. If he captures, then we capture back. And we've got a decent center. Yep, we've always got g4 on move 4 there, too. Um, so just castle. He plays a move, I play a move. It's very London-y. Okay, we're going to stop knight e4 before it happens. And then, not sure what to do about the center. Um, it's too bad I allowed bishop b7. It's one less thing he has to think about. One fewer complication. Alright, so I have to play rook to e1 to guard this e4 square. Otherwise, he can just use it for free, and that's no fun. Right, and I don't suppose I'm going to give up the d4 square. So, we'll attempt to demonstrate the dominance of the light squared bishop in a position where many pawns are on light squares. Oh, right, and yeah, thematically, just pretend that this is, um, oh, what's it called? A stone wall. Just pretend I'm playing that. Play like rook e3, rook h3, f3, g4. Just pretend, make believe that, like, this is a better opening than it actually is. And maybe good things will happen. All right, so let's provoke the fire of whatever might come when I do this. I see I have a notification. Can you tell me why it won't import? 
Um, no, actually, I don't know why it won't import. Um, whatever it is, I don't know. I'm only an expert of things that work. If it doesn't work, I don't know why. But if it does work, I get all the credit. That's how technology works. Now, um, yeah, I'm not sure why some things work and why some don't. It would take a lot of work to troubleshoot. Um, Ah, why that? Why the security policy won't import? Could be an expired certificate. You never know. I like those double entendres. Yeah, the anti-engineer, the person who takes the credit for things being done, but doesn't actually make them work. Oh, so actually, I have a threat here. Is G5? and then sack on h7, and then queen h5, rook h3. So this whole time I've been sitting here like, oh, my opponent's planning something. This plan might just be to react to the things that I'm setting up here. Um, okay, that does definitely delay sacrifices on h7. Um, if I take... Yeah, no, it seems like I don't get a pawn out of that, do I? I might. I can't tell. For sure that, um, well, I don't know. It's complicated. If I take, 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 yeah, that looks like I went a pawn. It looks fine. Take one of those, and take one of those. All right, so my rook is attacked. Um, I think my soundest play here is to go back to just striking the king side. If I could play g5, this might accelerate some sort of attack there. It's too bad that I've lifted my G pawn in terms of my king's safety. But the G pawn can also be a useful weapon for breaking this open, so I can't feel entirely bad about that. Um Okay, so he's setting up... He probably should have played rook fd8 if he wanted to be more subtle about it. Um... Oh. What? Okay. What's the super subtle idea here? What's gonna make up for the fact that you just made holes on your king side? I mean, yeah, you will be able to defend your knight there, sure. Um, I'm debating now because d4 is falling. Um, so. I need a good way to invade. Um, ah, time pressure. So much time pressure.
That was a good shot. That was a really good shot there. Oh, could have just blocked the rook? I didn't see it. Um. Okay, we take it. We have so taken that game. Could have just blocked something with the rook. Yeah, indeed, that was a good game. Um, could have just blocked with the rook. Oh, rook h7. Yeah, that would have done it. That would have done it. Um, there might have been other blocks too. I was just looking at like knight g8 check and knight h6, but he's got king f8. Um, all right. What's he got this time? Knight f3. All right, we're playing a queen's gambit down a tempo thing. Um, Grinfeld down a tempo? Seems like a really safe idea. Um, YOLO, here we go. <laughs> Alright, so I assume C4 is coming. So, does anybody know Grinfeld reversed theory? It's probably, like, um, worse than normal Grinfeld theory. Alright, does this go Queen C7? Queen D7? Um... Yeah, all my stuff that would normally work. I, I assume I have to play queen d7 here. It looks a lot more tame than what you would see in a normal Grunfeld. And then I assume I have to play something. I, I want to play knight f6, but I'm afraid of bishop g5. Well, I'm as afraid of as I am of this. I'm more curious about, is it totally busted? So, uh, curiosity killed the cat. Um, if I do lose this, it's all the fault of that move. Okay, so... Yeah, this doesn't seem very wise. I'm basically forced to play this, but it gets a whole lot worse pretty quickly. Uh, except, here I might be okay. Um... Well, I'm losing a pawn, no matter how you slice it. No, I'm not. There's one line here where I might not be losing a pawn. Might be losing a king, but not a pawn. Alright, so... My king is super strong here. Also, I could have just done the reasonable thing. And should have done the reasonable thing. But that would have been too reasonable. Um, 
Right. Okay. But did he see this? Okay. Uh, I'm thinking that was a bit sublime, but um, I'm only down a pawn, thanks to that wonderful tactic. Um, yeah, so then we just do the reasonable thing after all. Um, And then, unfortunately, this is not entirely going to work out due to one little, oh, two little details, actually. I was foreseeing rook d4, but we get this instead. So this goes to show that, like, yeah, when you don't know an opening and your 1700 rated opponent, like, knows it out to move 30, probably shouldn't pick that opening. There's a reason um, not to pick that. Alright, so... Um, go pawn. You can do it, pawn. Just have to believe. Oh, I should have played rook a8. Yeah, not that it matters. We can concede that. So, yeah. But that is a pretty double-edged opening. So, that does... That certainly gets your opponent's attention. Whereas they might, like, fall asleep if you're playing a London. They're not going to fall asleep inside reverse Grunfeld. Um... I had three C takes D4. Alright, we're gonna London it again. So much London. Alright, so that square is very much up for grabs at the moment. Ha! Yeah, this never happens in London. Well, I don't know, maybe it does happen. But, um, it's more typical of other openings. That's fun. In the actual Grunfeld, it's better to play C takes D when Knight takes D doesn't hit a knight. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I'm following the details of how that works, but... It's good to know that I had C takes D4 there. Alright, so we'll just continue the development. Take this square. Ah, it's another person with a spinner. You know, I hear that, like, after a day, they're going to fix those loading icons. But for now, um, yeah, those serve as a reminder of what's going to happen when all the Title II internet regulation gets repealed by Congress. Uh, 
Um, it probably won't affect Twitch at all, but uh, certainly other sites will have that sort of challenge. Right, right. No, certainly that makes sense. If there's no knight on c3 to be captured, then um, that makes the d4, I'm sorry, the e4 push that much more effective. I've certainly exploited that before. Right. Yeah, the absence of that knight trade means that the space advantage um, that the first player gets is a much stronger advantage. Well, it's his move. There's complicated stuff that's certainly possible here. Um, for example, this thing that I just exposed. I didn't take seriously because I was pretty sure it didn't work, but if he's spending time calculating anything, it's got to be that. Um, I still don't think it works, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Um, in a tournament game, don't do it that way, but when you're entertaining a live audience, by all means, just go for the throat. Um, but yeah, see I've got this, so yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Is that even my best way to counter this? No, not really. I've got F5 also. Um, nope. Well, I guess I'm going to pin one of my pieces. That's not so great. Um, it's entertaining, though. It's excellent entertainment when I drop stuff. Um, hmm. Okay, we'll gain a tempo like this. I got away with a cheapo. Oh wow, got away with two tactics that should not have worked. That's spiffy. Um, it's too bad my opponent's in time trouble. Or this could have been a much more interesting fight here. Well, that did not turn out the way that it should have. Um, I think my opponent did accurately calculate that. That was well played. I mean, yeah, he completely panicked in time trouble, but um, negating that, I think that bishop takes h3 combination was actually interesting. Um, rook g5. I still don't necessarily believe all of this, but... Um, it has a lot of credence here. So yeah, f5, I was greedy. I got severely punished for that. But queen f3 would have held. And if knight g4, I just moved my king to like g2 or something. And this is okay. 
Um, my original idea, Rook F3 doesn't still doesn't look that great. All my pieces are really clumped up. Um, also, what was I thinking playing F4? I have no need to play F4 here. F4 is like the last thing that I need to do in this position. I should have like played Bishop E2. That would have fixed everything. F4 is okay, but strategically, like, what the heck? It's very tempting to play F4, but... Right. But, I mean, Bishop E2 does everything I need. And if he checks me, then I play F4. But there's no need for me to play F4 right away. Um... Currently, my only weak point is on h3, or g2, but he has no way to get a piece there. Like, his rook can get there, but this queen is, like, miles away from g2, as is his knight. His knight would have to literally, like, go through h4 to get there, because f4 is off-limits, e3 is off-limits, and e1 is off-limits. So my only weak point is h3. Um, so, you know, if I just, like, play bishop e2... It would have been very difficult for him to hit that weak point a second time. Um, and then at my leisure, I could like play rook g1, knight f1, knight g3, f4, bishop g4. Just do like all the things. There's nothing he can do to stop any of that. Instead, I just push the pawn and like expose everything, and then I push it to f5. I was not thinking very clearly. Alright, let's see if we can find another opponent for some 3-2. Be wrapping up pretty shortly here. Oh wow. Didn't realize just how long we went on for here. Um, that's definitely quite a duration that we went on for. Um, let's see. How long is said duration? Uh, that's about what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, we did get an opponent. All right, 1905. Oh, I'm white. I go first. All right. So against knight of six, we play two pawns side by side. Um. Then we're going to go for Bogo Indian stuff. Or Queen's Indian. Um, now, I assume that this is a more timid, uh, less risky Queen's Indian setup than what I've historically played. Um, I think I've seen someone indicate this is actually okay for white. Um... So, oh right, his bishop on b4 is not compelled to capture. I could play f4 myself. Um, seems to make a weakness, but I'm not sure what else I'm playing for here. So, yeah, let's take the center. And actually, yeah, maybe a rook lift might be in the future. Oh, uh, never mind. Rook lift is not looking very likely at this point in time. Um, this is like a stone wall gone horribly somewhere. So is b3... no, b3 is just insane here. It's not worth deeply analyzing. He's gonna have to play c takes d. Um, and then I'm gonna have an isolated queen pawn. But this means I have attacking chances. 
Um, so let's take this. Well, I guess the more pieces get exchanged, the worse my attacking chances are, though. So do I want to assess just how bad my chances are, or do I want to just go for something? Also, this knight e4 definitely exploits the hole in my position. Um, hmm. Yeah, where's my bishop going to go? I guess e3 is the best place the bishop can go at this time. So we're going to build up a large center, as long as our opponent's not going to strike it down. Might as well make this as large as we can. Um, of course, now he's going to exchange and start breaking down my center. Um, can't really stop knight e4, can I? Here, let's expose my bishop this way. And so I'm hitting f7 twice, but I'm also hitting the f-pawn. Um... It's not so easy for him to defend his f-pawn now. He could play g6. I'm not sure that I'd advise it, but he could play that. Alright, so... I don't want to give him access to d5, so we're going to take back. Oh, he's got bishop e4, doesn't he? So he didn't need access to d5. He's oh, not taking advantage of that though. Um, this is interesting. Did I miscalculate something? Yes, that doesn't work. Well, no, maybe this does work. I'm down to 30 seconds, so I'm just moving, but I think I calculated this correctly, that queen h5 and or just if he takes g5, I take back, um, gives me something here. It's not perfect, but this looks like a thing. The point would be if rook takes f7, queen h5, g6, oh, I can't take on h7. So I have to switch up the move order. I have to recapture f7 first. Then he takes back. Then we check. And then if he plays g6, um, then we take h7. Of course he doesn't, because that would be insane. Um, but I still have something here. It's not very much. Uh, wow. That's complicated. Don't forget that this controls F8. walked into a one mover.
Well, this is exciting now, isn't it? Isn't this exciting? <sighs> Woo! Okay. Something happened there. Um... Not exactly sure what that was. Jeez. Let's take a look. And by let's, I mean stockfish... Could you blunder check this for me? Because I'm sure you're going to find some blunders. Rook c3. Yeah, I figured Rook c3 is probably not so great. Okay, so here's our graph. I don't know to what extent that captures. Um, but it's very spiky. Um, so the last point at which I wasn't... Okay. I was doing okay after Queen f6. Yeah, I debated this, and I'm like, yes, I could liquidate, but this is bad. So I picked something worse. Um, I just complicated the position. Um, as opposed to just... Uh, trading down on f6 here. In which case, uh, I get to fight a rook versus a bishop and a knight. Which I might not have been so successful with that. So, last position where I was ahead would be this one. And apparently I should trade on d7. Um, and apparently this is okay. Yeah, one movers are pretty special. Yeah, so then I play this. Oh, all right. So I wasn't sure about b3 at all. Uh, queen a4 exploits this weakness he just created on a7. So that'd be forking a knight and a pawn. Gets some kind of initiative. Oh, also hits this bishop. So. Um, queen a4, knight takes e5, is as far as this line goes, apparently. Um, but apparently that's okay, but b3 just makes, I mean, it does make kind of a strong center, but, um, the evaluation graph just shows a steady decline as I just keep walking into one thing after another. Um, and then here I play queen d3 instead of queen c2, and this matters because... I don't know. He's got dc4, and I don't have bishop takes. It would be nice to have the bishop on that square. Man. So, a lot of stuff going on there. Can we really end it on that note? I don't suppose we can. I'll try to end it on a better game. But yeah, we're learning d4, and man, um, d4 is not so easy to learn. Right, we got rise here. Um, so, Vienna. Alright. Ah, we get this line of the Vienna. It's probably not a bad thing for me to practice. Um, and we defend that. And then we cry. No, uh, I'm sure this is fine. Um, Alright, so if I do knight d4... Knight d5, knight f3, yeah, looks okay. Probably isn't okay, because it's my idea. It's got my opponent thinking. Um, so maybe it's okay? Maybe? I don't know. It looks super crazy, but... Um, that's kind of typical of my moves, so... Oh, we have a retreat. 
I think it, that means it's time for my pieces to retreat also. Um, just kidding. We're going to go retreat over this way. Because otherwise knight g5 kind of traps my bishop almost. So... Alright. We've got some interesting development. Um... Still have not committed to which side I want to castle on. It's probably not going to be queen side. Although, maybe it's not going to be king side either. Um, okay, so this kind of sort of maybe blunts the bishop on c1 for the briefest of moments. Um, long term probably might not be the best thing for me to have done, but short term it looks pretty cool. Um, Alright, I guess I am castling this. Uh, sure, why not? How bad could it be? Alright, I suppose I capture and return. And go retreat. Alright, so now... something. That looks like a developing move. Um, thankfully I've got this accidental tactic. Otherwise that could have been a sad moment right there. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Accidental tactic does not spare everything. Um... That could be a problem. That could be a problem. In between move, YOLO. <laughs> this does not work at all, but um, I can pretend it does. And you guys can use your imagination. All of you. If you're watching this, this is some brilliant combination. It's from like Fisher Burn 1960 whatever. It's, it's the part where he gives away the piece. Or the queen or the whatever. It ends up being a brilliant combination. That, that's what we're witnessing right now. Certainly we're not witnessing me just blundering another piece like I normally do. Wait, am I already down a piece and about to go down another piece? No. No, the deal was if I take d4, he take, or, um, I lose my e6 bishop. Okay. Well, um, okay, and I guess we push this again, right? It's all part of the plan. The plan to something. All right, and we'll just put the queen out of harm's way. Oh man, one movers for days. Uh, I need more one movers. Okay. Oh, right. That kind of deals with the entire thread. 
Um, that's not cool. Um, I don't know, maybe I can make another threat somehow? It does not look so simple, but maybe? This is probably not so looking so great for the whack pieces right now. Um, all right, we got some pawns moving forward. Um, Pawn is the soul of chess. These pawns will break through that wall somehow. They just need to believe. Alright, that's a check. That's also a check. Um... Oh, wait. Oh, that's clever. Oops, I lost on time. Um, bummer. I almost had that one, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, F2 just, like, queen takes, I guess. I don't know. I saw F2 and I'm like, yeah, that looks like my best try, but I didn't believe in it. Um, probably should have tried it. Um, also possible might be Rook H7, maybe, I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So I, I'm like, F2 just leads me into pro best case. It's just a protracted endgame where I'm down like four pawns. Worst case, um, it's about as equal to resigning here. Oh, right. Yeah, if I do rook h7, yeah, there's that mate stuff. Um, or whatever that is. Probably checkmate. Um, Yep, so, and I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything in any of this. So, well, other than whatever happened way earlier. Um, oh, F5 is just ridiculous on my part. It shows that I need a break. Um, and, yeah, the fact that I promptly hung a knight... I should have played like rook d8 instead of rook e8, but by this point, I'm playing kind of aimlessly anyhow. So, I uh, totally deserved what I received there. So, yeah, losing on time was definitely a good move. Um, although, yeah, possibly um, resigning would have been a more appropriate decision, but, you know try to keep it interesting. We wouldn't want to be too predictable now, would we? So yeah, that's me attempting to learn new openings. Um, and while progress is being made, it turns out that learning involves a lot of time and effort and study and discipline and, you know, all those things. Probably means I can't be playing 3-2 all the time. I need to play better games. 
So, I uh, hope you had fun. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you around.